Now for this next part, it says that after being struck by A, the particle B collides directly with another particle C of mass 4m, which is at rest on the floor. And the coefficient of restitution between B and C is 2e. Given that the direction of motion of B is reversed by the collision, we've got to find the range of possible values of E. And you can see I've drawn a sketch here of the situation. We've got our particle B, mass 3m, and from the previous part we found out that its velocity after it was hit by A was u over 4 multiplied by 1 plus e to the right. So I've let the final speed of b be vb and it's moving to the left because its motion has changed direction and you can see that I've called the final velocity of c vc and it's to the right. Now to find this possible range of values of e what we've got to first of all look at is the conservation of linear momentum. So we'll just put this down for short cons of linear momentum. Okay, lin mom. All right. And I'm going to have to write quite small here if I'm to get it on the one screen. But uh, we'll take to the right as the positive sense when we're working out the conservation of linear momentum. So what we've got then is for the initial momentum for B, we've got the mass, which is 3m, multiplied by its velocity. So it's u over 4 multiplied by 1 plus e. And it's in the positive sense. So we've got u over 4 multiplied by 1 plus e. And there's no momentum for particle C because it's got no velocity. So this is going to be equal to the momentum afterwards. So if we take our mass for B, which is 3m, and it's multiplied by minus Vb because it's moving in the opposite sense to what we've got here. So that's minus Vb. And then we've got the momentum for C, which is its mass, 4m, multiplied by its velocity, which is positive Vc. Now, in each one of these terms, in each of the three, ter three terms, I notice that we've got an m in each one, so we can cancel that out. And if I now multiply throughout by 4, just to eliminate the 4, what we have is therefore we're just left with 3u multiplied by 1 plus e for this term. I'm going to expand the bracket at the same time, so I'm going to get 3u and then plus 3ue. And then this is going to equal, and we're multiplying this term by 4, so we're going to get minus 12vb. We multiply this next term by 4, and we end up with 16vc. Now with this equation, we're just going to call it equation 1. We're going to need to return back to it later on. The next up is to look at Newton's law of impact. So we'll just abbreviate this to Newton's law of impact. And remember, this is where we look at the coefficient of restitution. Now between B and C, we're told that the coefficient of restitution is 2e. So that coefficient of restitution, 2e, compares the relative speed of separation to the relative speed of approach. Now, the relative speed of separation is going to be VB plus VC because they're going away from one another. So we've got VB plus VC. And the relative speed of approach, because this is stationary, is just going to be U over 4 multiplied by 1 plus e. So we've got u over 4 multiplied by 1 plus e. Now we need to tidy this up and so what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by u over 4 times 1 plus e. So 
when we do that we therefore have 2e multiplied by u over 4 multiplied by 1 plus e and that's going to equal vb plus vc what I've noticed now is we can cancel out the 2 into the 2 goes once and into the 4 goes twice now I want to get rid of this 2 and I also want to start thinking about working with simultaneous equations so I can see that we can cancel out the VC term here and concentrate on the VB term if I bring this VC up to 16 so it matches this one so what I'm going to do is multiply throughout by 16 we'll just put it here multiply by 16 and if we do that for this first term half of 16 is going to give us 8 so we're going to have therefore 8 EU multiplied by the bracket 1 plus e is going to equal 16 VB plus 16 VC and I'm going to call this equation 2 now we're going to work with these two equations solve them simultaneously so we'll just come down here and we're going to eliminate the term in VC the 16 VC we can do that by subtracting our equations equation 2 minus equation 1 so if we do that what we end up with and I'm going to expand this bracket as well at the same time we're going to have this term minus these two terms so if we expand the bracket here we're going to have 8 EU plus 8 e squared u and then we've got to subtract these two terms so it's minus 3u minus 3ue and that's going to equal 16 vb minus minus 12 vb so that's going to be 28 vb now if i divide both sides by 28 to make vb the subject and also tidy up these terms here what we've got is 8 e squared u 8 e squared u and then we've got 8 eu minus 3 eu gives us 5 eu and then finally we've got minus 3 u and we're dividing this by the 28 now VB has got to be a positive quantity I know it's to the left but nonetheless we want this to come out positive we've taken the into account that it was an, in the negative sense here but the actual magnitude of VB is going to be positive so what I'm expecting is that this quantity is going to be greater than zero and that will mean that the numerator has to be greater than zero and each of these terms has also got a u in it so I can divide through by u so if I do that I therefore have 8 e squared plus 5 e minus the 3 must be greater than zero and now I can factorize this what we've got is this will factorize into a couple of brackets which are going to be greater than zero what we'll have is 80 and an e here and then we'll have a 3 and a 1 a minus here and a plus here so we get 80 minus 3e which is your 5e now we've got this inequality and solving a quadratic inequality means we've got to look at the critical values I'll abbreviate that to CVs the critical values are the values that make this equal to zero so it'll be this first factor would equal zero 80 minus 3 equaling zero and if that's the case e would equal 3 eighths with this other factor e would equal minus 1 
So if we were to sketch a graph showing E as the horizontal axis here, and we were to sketch this graph, or 80 squared plus 5E minus 3, we would see that it equals 0, in other words, crosses this axis here at minus 1 and 3 eighths. So you've got minus 1 here, and you've got 3 eighths, say, here. And our graph would look something like this. And what we're looking for is the values that make the curve greater than zero above the axis here. So it'll be this section of the curve and this section of the curve. So we can see that E has to be greater than 3 eighths or less than minus 1. But the point is E, the coefficient of restitution, always has to be a positive value. So we can rule out that it's going to have to be less than minus 1. It's got to be greater than 3 eighths. So therefore, from the graph, we see that E has got to be greater than 3 eighths. But we've got to be very careful here, because between particles B and C, the coefficient of restitution is 2E. And we know that the coefficient of restitution must be a value that's always positive, but also less than or equal to 1. So if that's the case, we know that also 2E must be less than or equal to 1. And it follows there that E must be less than or equal to a half. So if we combine these ideas, that is that E has got to be less than or equal to half, but at the same time greater than 3 eighths, what we've got is a final solution, and that is E has got to be greater than 3 eighths, but less than or equal to a half. And that's our solution. All right?